but I didn't know how to get it. I didn't even know what it was used for. I just did not, I just believed that it was for today. So this man tells me within a few minutes this, you know, that the Holy Ghost will come upon you and it will give you power to be a witness. Well, that bear witness because here I am trying to witness to people and I'm thinking to myself, if I can have more power to do that, that makes sense. So he get, went through a little bit of a teaching, laid his hands on me and right in the middle of Starbucks at 9 a.m. when everybody's in Starbucks, I busted out in tongues and I was filled with the Holy Spirit. And what happened was I went from witnessing to people basically telling them, come to church, come to church, come to church, to now, I'm not telling people to come to church, but I'm sharing with them this Jesus that had changed my life. I'm sharing with them through the power of the Holy, of the, of the, of the word of God, what God had done for me. And so when I got baptized with the Holy Ghost, the Bible says that you'll be a witness. It'll be empower you to be a witness. That's exactly verbatim what happened to me. My message went from come to church to meet this Jesus that met me in a jail cell and that can do anything for you. If he'll do it for me, he'll do it for you. And by the way, he's got the power to do anything. He set me free. He delivered me. Um, he cleansed me. I mean, he did it all in the matter of a few seconds. And so with that power, with that burn in me, we just started going to the worst streets in Dallas. We go out to the bus stops where they peddle drugs and they move drugs around and we would just share the gospel with them. Um, we had, and I didn't know a lot about the Bible. I'm a year into this. The Bible I knew is just the Bible that I had read. I'd go to church. But we didn't have Bible studies and it was pretty much just me and a couple of guys that were all coming from a life of destruction and despair, sitting around just reading the Bible, trying to make sense of it. And we would, you know, get a hold of something and we would study it out, but it was minimal. And so we would go out to this, to the streets and share what we had. And I can remember people getting saved, people uh, handing us their drugs. We would throw them into the dumpster. It was just, it was unbelievable watching what this power that God had put inside of us was doing. And with no knowledge, with no understanding, very little at, at best, God was moving. And it's the same way he did with me when I was in jail. I, I was a nobody, a nothing. I had nothing. I, I My thoughts were wrong, but he came in and gave me this gift free of anything I could do. And it just, it was mind blowing to me. I got through Bible school and right at the tail end of my Bible school, I met my wife. Um, I was 26 years old at the time. And a 26 year old in the world's viewpoint, especially in America, we're supposed to be married. We're supposed to have children. And, you know, you're supposed to be looking for these things. And I just refused to go out and look for my wife. I, as much as I wanted to, as much as I wanted that, as much as I knew that was the blessing of God and that he had somebody for me, the I just did not want to go out and look for that person. And I would go to church and, you know, I would do those things. But God, through the most unlikely person, um, somebody I would have never imagined, this person calls me one night and says, I found the woman for you. And in my mind, I'm thinking nothing good is going to come from this person. There's no way that you have anything good for me. And so she sends me a picture and I thought, well, she's really good looking, but there's no way that anything good is going to come from this person. And so I went to a, uh, it was an outreach, a Thanksgiving outreach with this person. And she wanted to introduce me to um, my wife now, Chrissy. And so I went and I left and nothing happened. And then uh, Christmas rolled around. There was another outreach. So I went again and Chrissy, my wife now, um, started talking to this person about me. And I told, so this person calls me and I just I told the person like, you can have her call me 
uh, and we can talk or I'll call her or whatever. So we got on the phone and we just, I just, I did everything in my will to convince this person that she's not the one for me. I, and she did the same thing to me. Later on, I found out she was at the exact same place I was not seeking a husband. I was at the exact place she was not seeking a wife, although we wanted it, but we weren't going to go out and seek it. But we had a lot of standards. We did not want, you know, we, we, the first conversation was, is I'm going to serve God. I don't care what it looks like. I'm sold out to God. I, I, we're, this is what we're going to do with our, my money. This is how I'm going to live my life. And I was laying this stuff out thick and hard and she was laying it out thick and hard at the end of the conversation. I realized this is exactly my life. And it was just, a, again, a supernatural. God had every desire. He's got every desire that I had. He had it already planned. He had it already worked out. It was already done. It was just simply a matter of me receiving it, the gift of God. And so... He's coming. Jesus is coming. I can't wait to hear the trumpet call. He's coming. Jesus is coming. And when he comes, we'll crown him Lord of all. Within eight months, um, we were married. We knew at the end of that conversation that this was God. I had no job. She had no job. We we're 26. She was 28 years old at the time. Uh, in the natural, it made no sense for us to get married. We didn't have anything, but we knew it was God. And so we got married and a job came on that she took. Um, the same thing happened for me. A friend of mine at the time was starting a business and asked me if I wanted to help him start it. So I took that job and then we had enough money to, to get married and to pay our minimal bills. And through that process of me working at this job, which is which was a scrap yard, is how I got introduced to a business that I currently have. Um, I had an idea, my mother, which was a business partner of mine, uh, or is a business partner of mine. She was doing um, this particular business. And so I had an idea to start this business and it was doing okay. It wasn't making any money, but it was gaining traction. But I was over here on this other scrap metal yard helping start this business. And so about a year and a half into it, um, I just really had a desire to have my own business. And I went to the man, a friend of mine, and I said, Where, where's my role going to be at in this? And we sat down and within about four or five minutes, I knew that I'm going to have to do something different, that this is not where my heart's desire is. So the business at the time was doing about 600000 a year in gross sales, which was basically a break even. My wife and I were single. I mean, we didn't have any kids. We were married. She had a, a job paying an okay salary. And I decided, we just decided that we're just going to jump into this business and we're going to see what God will do. So I resigned from my position at this current job and we went into the auction business is what it is now. And Again, there was no guarantees. We just knew that God was going to give us the desires of our heart. That's what his word says. And we just stood on that. And we took what we read and uh, through prayer and through more, more than anything, just what does God's word say? Um, we stepped out. And the next year, the business went from 600000 to breaking even to 2.4 million in gross sales. And my mom and I made more money that year than we had ever made in a single year in one year. Again, I mean, the, I just, I will go back to this a hundred times, the gospel, it is the too good to be true, almost too good to be true news. It's not too good to be true because it's true, but it's almost too good. How does this stuff happen? 
how does a man come from the life that I live and then God just does all this stuff? It's the power of God. It's it's what it's the salvation from God. And so we started the business. It went through the roof. The following year, it went to 3.5 million in sales. During this time, my wife and I decided we wanted to have a baby, and my wife couldn't get pregnant. Uh, we tried for two years. We started thinking, well, should we go to the doctor? Should we do some procedures? That's really expensive. Um, it was like $50,000. Um, and at that time, that was a lot of money, especially when you're broke. And so I, I don't know that we even really prayed about it. We just knew that this was the promise of God, that God's promise was for us to have children. And we stood on that. And it was two years into it. And we were at a church service. My wife was on the altar team and she's up there praying for a lady. And the pastor gets a word of knowledge um, that somebody in this room is trying to have a baby. And so I heard it. My wife didn't. So I pulled my wife over there. He prayed for her. six weeks later. My wife was pregnant with my wife, with my daughter, Sarah. We had tried for two years to get pregnant. We went to the doctor. We did not do any um, surgeries or anything like that. We just went and got some uh, ideas on what it would take. And then God knew our desires in that altar. And within six weeks, my wife was pregnant. Immediately after my wife had Sarah, she got pregnant again. And so that's when we had Sadie. So Sadie and Sarah, they're 15 months apart. Uh, through this, right after Sadie was born, or right before Sadie was born, I went back into the scrap business, um, still having my uh, auction business, um, the scrap metal business. And the stories are wild, but the God just was in it. Um, he blessed our socks off. Currently today, the, uh, a total combined revenue for my businesses is about $20 million. You know, I was doing some numbers the other day. Uh, it We revenue about $78,000 a day. I, it cost me $8,000 a day just to wake up. That's what my costs are. And that's overwhelming. I am not smart enough to do this. I don't have the ability to go out and make this stuff happen. And in the natural, I could get overwhelmed quick, but I already know that it's not me doing this. I'm in the business world. I'm not a pastor. Um, I do minister uh, as I am now from time to time. And I share things like this. I'm called to be in the, I'm in the business world and the power of God, whether you're a preacher. He's coming. Jesus is Life Stories. in the business world, if I'll just find where I'm supposed to be at, and if I'll stay in that lane, and if I will apply these, this word of God, the, the gospel, the almost too good to be true news. You know, we, we, we hear a lot about gospel in America, but I gave God my sins. I gave him everything my sin nature. That's really what it is. It's not our sin action, just our sin nature. So I gave God the worst of me. And in return, he gave me Jesus. It makes no sense, but it's God. That's exactly why he sent Jesus here was to, so that we sinners, the Bible says that we all fall short of the glory of God. If we commit one sin, I was a bad person. I did a lot more than one sin. 
Some people, my wife is one of these people. She was a good sinner, if there is one. She just didn't do as many sins. But the Bible says if you commit one sin, you've committed all. And so we give him our sin, whether we've done a lot or a little bit, and in return, we get grace. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. It's a gift. We receive it. Jesus, the Bible says in Philippians, as you receive Christ, so walk in him. And just as I received God that day, uh, when I was a sinner lost, headed to destruction in every area of my life, I had nothing to give him. There was nothing I had to offer him except for my sin in my heart. And I did that, and he gave me back exactly what that scripture says, the gift of eternal life. What's eternal life? A lot of times people, and this is a big part of eternal life, but Jesus says eternal life is to know God. Um, and, and this was one of the last things Jesus said was, eternal life, I pray, Father, that they may have eternal life, and eternal life is to know you. It is salvation. It's more than salvation. Salvation is spiritually, physically, financially. It's we're delivered from our, we're saved, we're going to heaven. But in that same prayer that I had, I was wanting just to be saved but then God delivered me, set me free, healed me. It's all in salvation. When we get saved, we give him what we have, which is nothing. And he gives us back everything, which is Jesus. Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Why do I bring up the business part of my uh, testimony? It's in God will give us the desires of our heart. He's wanting, he is there to bless us because of what Jesus did. Deuteronomy 28, we'll talk about the blessings and the curses. And you could, it'll say, if you'll do this, if you'll do this, if you'll do this. But because of what Jesus did, I get all the blessings. And because of what Jesus did, all these curses are gone. So people may say, well, I did. I got saved, or maybe you're here today and you would want to get saved. And is it just salvation? The Bible talks about Romans 12, 1 and 2. It talks about our minds being renewed. So there's a sin nature that we were all born into. The Bible says that sin entered the world through one man, Adam, and eternal life enters through one man, Jesus. So we have a sin nature. It's not our sin actions. It wasn't my drugs. It wasn't the actions I was doing. I was born. I inherited a sin nature. I was really good at it. I could do it without any question. I had a sin nature. So what happened is when I got saved, that sin nature was destroyed. Jesus came to destroy the dominion of darkness. That's what happened. And so once I got saved, then I had to learn my mind was programmed from my sin nature. My sin nature was gone, but my mind was still programmed based on what my sin nature had taught me. So there's a renewing of the mind that happens. You know, maybe you're here today and you understand, you can somewhat understand what I'm saying. It's a decision. It's a believing it's not a fixing anything. It's God's job to fix anything. It's God's job to deliver me. It's God's job to heal me. That's his job. That's his promise. And that's exactly what he wants to do. We have to recognize that we need a savior. Uh, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There's no one righteous. No, not even one. The Bible says that we have to be born again. That's what happened to me in that jail cell. I said a prayer and I was born again. Bible says you must be born of water and the spirit. We were born at, from the water in our mother's womb, but the spirit, we have to be born again. The spirit of God has to come alive in us. The, it is not by... I, 
What kept me from coming to God was me thinking I had to do something. I had to work. I had to get rid of this addiction. I had to get rid of, uh, and, and my whole life was wages. I wasn't a business person. So I realized that if I wouldn't work, I got wages. I earned something. If I I was fighting to get drugs, I had to work to get drugs. I had to work to have friends. I had to work to get uh, customers. I had to, everything in our lives are work driven, but God's not work driven. It's a receiving that we do. He's coming. Jesus is coming. I can't wait to hear the trumpet call. He's coming. Jesus is coming. And when he comes, we'll crown. 